let's face it, we're a nation of hoarders. Under lock and key across Britain, storage units are rammed to the roof. Oh, my God. Barns are bulging, garages are groaning. Oh, wow. They're a snapshot of our lives. There's a piano in here as well. There is a piano somewhere. Our loved ones. Here's Grandpa's accordion. Our luggage. Yet we're sinking in a sea of stuff. Goodbye. I'm on a crusade to declutter, unearth the stories. That's in a pile of stuff. Oh, Elsa. Anyway. Alison, will you be my wife, please? Dig up the diamonds. 800 and 1,200 pounds. Good grief. And turn people's stash into cash. 680, 700, 720. Welcome to Storage Hoarders. First up is therapist Gordon Froe and his partner, Lynn. For a decade now, they've had a number of storage units. The bill is an eye-watering 10,000 pounds. Now they've decided enough is enough. We all have to sort ourselves out at the end of the day. We really need to get on with it. And, uh, you know, how long can you keep a storage unit? Well, 10 years is way too long. Gordon and Lynn live in Denbury, a village in South Devon. Rural and historic, people have been living here since before the Norman Conquest in 1066. Storage became an issue after Gordon's late parents moved into a care home 10 years ago and he had to clear out their house. Of course, the inevitable happened that I haven't really got round to sorting it out. You know, there's so much to do in the present, isn't there? And that is so hard to deal with the past, it's weird. There's also some memorabilia from my father's wartime experiences. There's, there's a box that I hadn't actually seen before that was in their loft, which contains things like letters from fellow POWs when he was a, a prisoner of war in Japan. There are going to be a lot of memories to unlock in Gordon's storage. Ironically, Gordon works as a counsellor, often dealing with patients who have hoarding problems. Surely that's going to help. A lot of it is to do with actually facing the, the fear or the anxiety associated with dealing with stuff, whether it's psychological issues or material issues. And in this case, it's dealing with the accumulated stuff. While I feel that I can help people to deal with issues and problems of their own, it's the usual thing that when it comes to yourself, then it's much harder. The question is whether Gordon can face up to his family's accumulated storage. Lynn believes he can kick the habit. I think that Gordon's ready for the challenge now. Yeah. Sometimes letting go is go through stages. It's not just like, boom. A decade is a long time to delay a date with decluttering. It's time to unleash the Aggie McKenzie magic. It would be even better if Gordon and Lynn could clear the unit and save themselves a heap of cash. I hope we're all up to the task. So here we are, this is it. This is it. Time to go in. A moment of truth. Yes, <laughs> we'll be fine. We'll go in, we'll get it sorted. Good. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, cancel lunch, everyone. We've got a lot of work on here. Is this a lawnmower? Yeah, it's a lawnmower. Wow, this is an old lawnmower, isn't it? It's a very old lawnmower. Yes. That actually comes from my parents' house. That come from Switzerland. This is a well traveled chair. Look at it. <laughs> What's the story behind this chair? So, when my parents retired, this was a piece that they bought in an antique shop in Eastbourne. Oh, really? Yeah. So can you remember one of your parents sitting in that chair? Yeah, yeah, it was my father's chair. So, Gordon, I'm seeing something that's easily disposable, so that's great news, this right. old bed. That can easily go, can't it, on the skip? Well, you'd better have a word with Lynn about that. You know, looking at it, it looks like it should really go, doesn't it? Let me just yes, have a little does. smell of it. Lynn. That always helps, doesn't it? <laughs> Oh, that's not bad at all. Look at that. See how Let nice me be the judge of this. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the 
look at that bit. That looks quite good. You know what? It's not in a good state, is it? Yeah, we'll talk about this later, because I'm on a mission here. All right. Okay. And I have the feeling it's going to be a long one. Our second hoarder is businessman Ricky Parton. He's being helped by his daughter, Mariel. He has a garage stuffed to the brim that needs clearing. I do tend to keep a lot of things just for the sake of keeping it, as in one day I might need it. The Parton family recently moved from Manchester to Callington in East Cornwall. It's a former market town famous for its pasties. I would classify myself as a hoarder, um, as in I can't let go the items that I pick up from my various travels. My dad is a hoarder. <laughs> he buys the randomest things. My garage storage place, I would describe as a pile of history, unadopted history. <laughs> the reason Ricky moved down south was to expand his craft-making business. He was planning to use the garage, but now it's jam full of stuff. That's where we come in. If the garage is cleared out, I would feel um, several words, exuberated, I suppose, um, uh, chuffed. <laughs> Mariel is also keen to help clear her dad's clutter in the hope she'll be rewarded for her time. If he makes any money from selling anything, I think he should buy me some shoes. <laughs> shoes and boots and clothes and bags and belts. It's like, uh, yeah. Crikey, I just hope we can clear Ricky's garage before Mariel fills it with her footwear. Drastic times require drastic measures. That's why I've called on Tom Keane. A man with decades of experience in the antiques trade, he's here to help them out. If Ricky's got anything of worth, Tom's sure to spot it. Well, I'm hoping when I open this in a moment that it's going to be uh, a big red Ferrari in there. You wish. Tom might be in for a bit of a shock. Watch yourself. Well, I've seen worse. <laughs> Not for a little while, but I've seen worse. Well, you're never going to be able to work on that boat surrounded by all this stuff, so let's uh, see what else you've got and um, let's crack on. OK. <laughs> There's a film character in this, I'm sure, somewhere. <laughs> Can you recognise him? Can I get that to you for a moment? There you are. General sort of... Um, General stuff. Household moving thing yeah. so far. Yeah. One for the lodger. There you are, that one down there. Do you think there's anything valuable in here? There is. Go on, entice me, tell me what... Uh, uh, what there's some clocks, be. some phosphor bronze Roman rings jewellery. So, uh, whereabouts in there are they? <laughs> um, gee, that's a good question. I hope Ricky's amnesia doesn't last long or Tom's not going to get anywhere. Coming up, Gordon's father's wartime past leaves him in a state of shock. Mm. Mm. Yes, yeah, sudden, suddenly a burden of responsibility. <laughs> there are surprises in store for Marielle. Oh, what's that? And the bids are hotting up at auction. It's a good bid and gone, 320. I don't know what, there's a heat in here, the excitement, but I'm feeling very warm. <laughs> Earlier, Gordon and Lynn started unpacking both their late parents' possessions. Stuffed in storage for a decade now, none of it's been sorted, and it's time for us to tackle it head on. You know, looking at it, it looks like it should really go, doesn't it? And when Ricky and family moved 300 miles from Manchester to Cornwall, all their junk made the journey too. It's time to get rid of it. Can I get that to you for a moment? Yeah. There you are. To help our couples break up their booty, I've given them some signposts to assist in their sorting. Keep is for stuff they can't do without. Skip is for the items they want to throw out. Sell is for the pieces they think are worth peddling. And charity for items they want to donate. Later, our antiques experts will delve into the dust and see if they can muster up any diamonds. I'm hoping our couples have some treasure here that'll shine at auction. I've got in some helping hands. Oh, hi. Oh, hey, you come to help us. Hi. 
They're here to lay out all our hoarders' stuff so it'll be easier for them to sort. With the items spread out, I've given our couples a good amount of time to break into the boxes. Keep going, fellas. You're doing a great job. Give it a shout when you're ready. Oh, my word. Gordon and Lynn's storage has opened up like Pandora's box. I hope it's not going to overwhelm them. And Ricky's hoard? It appears he dumped half of his Manchester house in the garage when he moved down south. Is there going to be anything of worth here? It's going to, like, freak us out. Oh, my God! <laughs> God, I don't believe this. How did all that fit into that container? Oh, my God. This is more than I thought. Yeah, that is scary. It's time to get cracking. Fragile china. Can I put that on that bed? Look, a fur coat. A-R-F. Anne Rebecca Fro. Oh, what a sweetie. Your dad must have got it for her. It looks like they're already getting bogged down by nostalgia. It's time for me to have a word. What you need to think about is, do I actually need this? Will I actually use it? And does it gladden my heart to look at it? And if it doesn't, then it just goes the other way. Sure. This is worth anything. Down it goes. What's your tootsie? I just grab what I want, right? <laughs> Gordon. Oh my God. Gordon, do you think we should keep one of these at all? Can you test them out? If okay. you want to keep one, that's fine. How do you do this, Gordon? Okay. We have. Okay. Nice thought. Look at these stiff collar things. Those are my... Dad's? No, mine. Yours? I, I wore them for for what? at school, believe it or not. Too many crickets. Curtains, Lynn. Drinks. What we'll do is we'll put it on the side and uh, then the specialist... Yes, the... can have a look at it. Yeah. Gordon's interested in his parents' wartime past. His mother was a nurse and his officer father was captured by the Japanese after being stationed in Asia during the Second World War. Look, Japanese Red Cross, Tokyo. This is a is letter that? from my mum. Oh, in 1943. I've never seen these before. Really? I yeah. know, it's spooky. Yeah. Didn't see them while... My mum was alive. Uh, darling, I just got back from Dungannon. That's where she was born in Northern Ireland, mm -hmm. where they met. Mm -hmm. And they had a very cute way of meeting. They were at a dance. The that girls was... threw one of their shoes into the middle of the room. Uh -huh. The men went and picked up a shoe. <laughs> he made sure that he knew <laughs> which her shoe was. They had, oh. alre they had already been introduced, but uh -huh. they hadn't. Oh. <laughs> it's amazingly yes. romantic, yes. Mm. Yeah. So what does this say? Everyone asked to be remembered to you. My thoughts are forever with you, darling. All my love and kisses, yours ever. Ruby, that was her. She was Anne Rebecca. Mm hmm But Ruby was... Um, her pet yeah. name. Yeah. I mean, there may be a whole bunch more in there. In fact, it's a treasure trove of letters from the war. A real find which includes his father's dressing case. There you How are. posh is that? So what are you going to do with this? I'd love to know more about it. That is very special indeed. I sent Gordon to meet Michael Bowman, an experienced valuer who has been holding regular auctions at Chudley Town Hall for over 25 years. The POWs who were with Gordon's father in Japan gave him this box. It's certainly a slice of history. So this is the actual case that was presented? This is the actual shortly case. Shortly after the war? Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's, um, it says to Mr. Fro, as a token of esteem and gratitude, Wakayama, November 1943, March 1945. Hmm. Puts it into perspective, doesn't it? The mounts have silver hallmarks on them. 
and it has your father's initials. Mm -hmm. Lovely condition, the brushes and the bottles there, the jars. War memorabilia was once a niche area of antiques, but not anymore, and service medals are now the most popular category. Gordon's father was awarded the MBE, one of the highest honours in Britain, for his services when he was a prisoner of war. Yes, he hasn't spent his time showing it off to people, has he, by the look no, of it? It's just no. sat in this case, I should think. Mm. Frosted okay. silver, the king and queen's portraits on one side, okay. and the world cipher. Yes. On the reverse. Right. And the paperwork's underneath. Oh. From Buckingham Palace. Yeah. I greatly regret that I am unable to give you personally the award which you have so well earned. I now send it to you with my congratulations and my best wishes for your future happiness. From King George. So that's um, an important thing to have with it because the MBE, it wasn't issued with a name on it. Without that letter, mm -hmm. it could be an MBE belonging to anybody. Right. So that's very important that it ties it in it to the whole situation. Yeah. So without the paperwork, that would be a bit of a handicap. Right. So that's good news that you still have that. Mm. So this is presented to him, you, you believe, for his work in the prison camp. In the prison really, camp. For helping yeah. to supervise fellow inmates, the soldiers. I suppose in the camp. whatever the program of work was and looking after their welfare, making sure that. Morale was kept up. Gordon's father was also awarded the Military Cross for his courage and determination in fighting the Japanese in Southeast Asia. He held off the enemy for far longer than his orders demanded. The medals are beautiful, and you have this lovely cased set here. And some of the things you may have, you know, the background letters, mm. might just give it an extra mm -hmm. um, cachet. As a group, I think that probably the value lies at auction between three and four thousand. Um, mm. Yes, but, uh, sudden, suddenly a burden of responsibility. Yeah. Well, I'm very grateful to you for coming in and showing me these most interesting items. Thank uh, you. Just to you. Mm. The weight of history is sitting firmly on Gordon's shoulders. I obviously need to give some serious thought to what I would feel is most appropriate to do with this, respecting its origins and the context in which it's in my possession. We're back in East Cornwall with Ricky and Mariel. We've had our team lay out the stuff from their garage. Tom's also here to help the patterns unpack. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's an awful lot. This looked a lot less in the garage, didn't it? Yeah, it did, actually. Now um, it looks really daunting. Come on, let's go on with it. I'm going to help you go through some of these boxes, find some saleable lots, and uh, hopefully uh, you can help me by making firm decisions. OK. Mario, will you take out the polystyrene as well, first? Oh, what's that? Come and have a look. Why would you do that? It's right. not real, because would I eat a snake? Oh. Stay out. No. This is no time for games, Ricky. We need to turf out the tat. This is another clock, but it's, it's the workings more than... Might be useful for somebody for, for spares. Is it valuable? Hmm. No, it's only for down again. If we can find some more clock parts to go together, then we might be able to put them to auction as a collection of clock bits and bits parts, and, part, yeah. and some will bid. Yeah. Mario's got the right idea. Have you got the rest of this? I've got um, the weights and no pendulum and obviously no face. We're going to have hard work with him today, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. We first opened oh. the garage. I said there must be a red Ferrari in there. <laughs> Keep yeah, up. Yeah. Why do you need spoons? They're collectible spoons. Now then, mouse traps. What are you going to use it for? Ooh, use it. Don't use it. You just keep it. Look at the state of it. Yeah. Okay. Throw it away then. Yeah. I'm glad Mariel's making some decisions for hoarder dad Ricky. You want? Uh, well, you want, ah, there's a remote for the uh, Ferrari. <laughs> but is there anything of real value in his stash? Where's my car? Time's ticking for the two teams. Some hard decisions must be made if they're to make headway with their hordes. For Gordon and Lynn, it's a hard task sorting out their parent stuff. This is a gold pocket watch that belonged to my grandfather. Wow, looks amazing. Oh, Ricky, be brutal, be bold. I think you need to dump a whole load more tat. 
and Ricky thinks he's hit on something big. I was wondering about them, whether or not it's bone or tooth. Um, you know, what do you mean it, tusk, you mean? Well, tusk, yeah. Uh, no, bone in, in my, more like rib cage. Oh. That's not even the charity pile, I'm afraid. That's, it's um... not. Time is up. Ricky's never going to clear his garage if he keeps all that. And I'm not sure what a charity would do with an African mask. Again, Gordon and Lynn are keeping way too much to clear their unit. Charities will do well, though. But I'm more interested in their bountiful cell pile. Our expert's going to love rifling through that. Next up, Gordon Storage makes more than just music. I think I'd be happy with that. Thanks for the bit at 35 And at auction, things get tricky for Ricky. All done and selling, I'll be at 35 and gone. Oh, he's not happy with that. We're here to downsize our storage orders. God, I don't believe this. And to see if there are any treasures among the trash. Gordon and Lynn from Devon have tipped £10,000 into storage. Under lock and key for a decade, I'm helping them halve their hoard. Then there's Ricky and daughter Mariel, whose garage is packed to the rafters. You don't need to keep that. OK. The big question for our expert is whether there's anything of value among their stuff. Perry Field's been immersed in the world of antiques since he was a boy. I've called him in to decipher what's hot and what's not. Gordon and Lynn's unpacked unit is the first to be scrutinised. We've got some really nice things here, um, very interesting. And first, let's, let's just look at the silver here, which is actually a really nice selection. I'm assuming somebody collected spoons in the family. Mm -hmm. And then something which is, I think is really nice, mm -hmm. because these are actually made in the style of an 18th century pair of sugar nips, that's what they're called. So I was quite surprised to see the George Jetson hallmark here probably dates to the 1950s, I would think. But that's nice, because it makes a really nice little collection of silver. And then here, we've got a little gold collection. Oh. And we've got some very nice cufflinks here. Mm. And that's a gold watch, dating to the 1930s. Mm. And probably two to three hundred pounds there. Really? Yeah, it's oh, amazing. Yeah. Gosh, that's a amazing. surprise. Yeah. Wow. Over here, this is the poor man's version of the Vienna porcelain oh. that people buy and collect. This is actually a print. And if that were the Vienna porcelain, top flight, quality, excellent, everything <laughs> lovely, that bowl alone would probably be 300 pounds. Oh. But as a service, and I know it's quite extensive, you're looking at 80 to 120, something in that region, I would have thought. Then we've got this, which I love. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Wow. And this is Belik. Uh -huh. But you knew that, didn't you? I did know that. The condition is it's incredible. It's absolutely it? incredible. I can't see a chip or... And these are so mm -hmm. delicate that they really do yes. damage yeah. quite easily. So I'm going to say around 200 pounds. Right. Good. It's not bad, is it? Yeah. yeah. Not bad at all. That is good. Mm. And here we've got a screen, and um, I think it dates to about 1900, and it's probably French, I would have thought. And you can see these lovely silk panels, and I think somebody would probably like it because it's original, and I'm sure that's the original silk. Yeah. I like it. This is the treasure. It's a hunter, and by pressing the top, the knob... Oh, that's how you open it. It flicks open. <gasps> We didn't, yeah. couldn't figure out how to do it. It's beautiful. And I think, again, depending on weight, I think you're looking at probably 800 to 1,000 pounds. Wow. I thought it'd be worth a substantial amount, but um, I didn't think it'd be quite as high as that. Oh, wow. No. Good. Well, that's good. <laughs> you found some lovely things and real treasures. Oh. So I think it's made it all worthwhile. Yeah. Definitely. The lots really impressed our expert. If Gordon sold all these items at the top of their valuations, he could make a small fortune. So, to sum up then, the selection of silver cutlery, including the George Jensen snips, was valued by Perry at 80 to 120 pounds. The collection of gold was priced at up to 300 pounds. The printed Vienna tea set serving at up to 120 pounds. The Belique porcelain jug was valued at £200. The mahogany and silk screens estimated at £150. Our expert also singled out an antique chair valued at £20. 
and a watercolour painting by Thomas Sidney for up to £70. And as for that watch, well, Gordon's decided it needs to spend more time with him, so he's keeping it for now. And Petty's also found Gordon's guitar, which he bought in London in the mid-1960s. Can you remember how much you spent on it? No, but it was... Uh, it was under £50. Well, I think it's very nice, and it certainly looks like quality. Yeah. Um, and I think it's unusual to have a Japanese guitar that early, because yes. you wouldn't expect it somehow. No, I think that's why I went for it, because it was rather... It was, yes, it was the start of the era when Japanese made manufactured things. Sure, well, let's find out what it's all about. Yeah. I think that'd be really interesting. exciting. Yeah. So I sent Gordon off to meet Phil Free. His team at the shop in Tynmouth has over 50 years' experience in selling musical instruments. Oh, that's an old Yari. Well, these are Japanese. Um, it's a cedar top, mahogany back and sides, mm. classical guitar. Um, obviously, it says when it was made, 1966. S. Yari, I mean, he was actually considered, at one time, the Stradivarius of guitar making. Okay. Um, and some of his guitars went for quite some money, you know. Mm. This one, I don't think it is made by him in particular. Mm. Um, it's probably one of his, um, you know, workers or, or sons that made that made them. In fact, K. Yari is still going um, mm. in conjunction with uh, a, another guitar firm, and um, and, they, and he's he's sort of a, well into his 80s and still still at the factory every day in Nagoya in Japan, really? making guitars. Yeah, wow. so it's, it's a lovely story. There's such a demand for vintage guitars that there are books and value guides for collectors. Take the Fender Stratocaster guitar. If you had invested in a model from 1954, it would have beaten investments in stocks and shares every time. Yeah, so I mean, it's you know, it's uh, it's a solid top as well. So I mean, they they usually had a, have a much better sound, and they mature with age. Value-wise, I would have said. If it was in good condition, it might be worth a couple of hundred or so, but it does need some work doing. Um, so, you know, that does affect the value considerably. Sure. A hundred pounds, I could probably do something with it and find a good home for it. OK. Well, I think, I think I'd be happy with that. OK, fine. Well, oh. well uh, I'll go and get you some money then. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you. What a great sale for Gordon. It's auction time. Gordon's got seven lots for bidders today. What does he expect to make? Uh, around 500, maybe a bit more, I don't uh -huh. know. Is there any single item that you've got high hopes for? I think the Belique jug. Yes, that Do you remember beautiful that? jug. Yeah. Oh, that is exquisite. I mean, it is exquisite. I hope that might find yes. a nice home somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Before the bidding begins, we get the inside track on Gordon's lots from auctioneer Matthew Caddick. Gordon has delivered a good splattering of interesting antiques. There's a Baum watch in a mixed lot, uh, which is golden. There's also uh, George Jensen um, sugar snips in, again, a, a mixed lot. These two are good names, they're well priced, and I think this, these two lots ought to do well for him today. Do you reckon for this? Excited? First up, the selection of silver cutlery valued at 80 to 120 pounds. Gordon put on a reserve price of 70, below which he's not willing to go. Five, 80, five, 90. Fantastic, this is what I Thanks like. Thanks for the bid at 90 pounds in front of me, taking five now at 90. I think we found the money, haven't we? We're selling at 90, 90 pounds. Wow. Happy? Yeah. Sold for 90 pounds. Great start and well done, Gordon. Next up, the collection of gold, including a watch, cufflinks and tie pins, valued at up to £300. I've got one, two, three, four, five bids, and I'm starting me at £220. I'll take £240 in the room. £240, £260, £280, £300, 320 beats the commission to buy a tenner. I'll take £340 now. £330, if it helps you, £320 will be done and selling. £320, it's a good bid and gone. £320, thank you. Sold for 320, more than the reserve and the estimate. That is fantastic. I don't know whether there's heat in here or the excitement, but I'm feeling very warm. <laughs> right, next up we've got the, oh, the tea service. 
the printed Vienna crockery set Perry Vise at 80 to 120 pounds. And for this tea service with uh, cartouches and classical scenes, uh, what should we say on this one? Stummy 100 pounds for it. 80 pounds for it. We'll call the bins here it goes, no less. No bids. Not sold. Okay, not sold. No bids, therefore not sold. Next, the Art Nouveau side chair valued at up to £20. £10 on bid and 12 there, 14, 16. It's no money, 16, 18, 20. People are interested in 22, 24, yeah. 26, 28, and 30, 32. At £30 to my left, take two now at £30. It's still a cheap chair. And selling at £30, are we undone? 1608, £30. Sold for £30. Next up, the Thomas Sydney watercolour, valued at 50 to 70 pounds. The BG head seen at 50 pounds, start me. No bids of 50 pounds. No art lovers in the no auction room to do No license of 50 pounds then. The reserve price of 60 pounds wrecked the sale. Next, the mahogany and silk screens, valued at up to 150 pounds. It's a good looking screen, and I've got one, two, three, four bids, and I'm starting at the bottom of the estimate, 100 pounds, 110, 120 is the next bid. 110 pounds here, me take 120. 120 there, 130, 140, do you want? Five's okay with me. 135 is bid on 140. Is now. It's a good bid, I'm going to sell it for 135 pounds, are we done? Happy with that? Yeah. That's pretty good, that's bang on the home. middle of the estimate. Yeah. Sold for 135 pounds. This is my favourite. This is my favourite, the bleak porcelain jug. Finally, this amazing bit of craftsmanship valued at £200. But will the bidder snap it up today? Stop me £200 for it. Stop me £150 for it. We'll see where it goes. £150 start me for this early bleak. They don't know anything in this room. How interesting. No bids of £150. I'm forced to pass it. No one likes it for £150. The reserve price of £200 scuppered the sale. What a shame. But overall, a good day for Gordon. You know what? You can sell that separately and get a really good price for it, I'm sure of that. I'm really interested to know how Gordon felt about parting with his parents' possessions. Well, I was quite happy to let go of those items. <gasps> That's something anyway. coming from you. <laughs> And I hope the screen in particular has found a good home because even though it's a bit tired, I there think was a it's lot of interest in the screen. Four was, bids in advance. I, I was, was surprised mm. actually. Mm -hmm. And of the items that didn't sell, the bleak porcelain jug, mm. I had such high hopes for that. Mm -hmm. I can always put it into another sale. That's right. Mm. That's right. You always know that you've got a good couple of hundred mm. pounds in that jug. Mm. And you'll have it if I. Oh. Just can't get rid of it. <laughs> you might hold it. Oh, it's just so beautiful. <laughs> it's so lovely. So when it was all added up, Gordon sold four items at auction, making £529 after commission. He also sold his classic guitar to the specialist for £100. That makes a grand total of £629. The real achievement, though, is that they've made great progress towards emptying their unit. So what has our therapist learned from my decluttering therapy? The whole process has given me a, an incentive, motivation to yes. explore local sales opportunities. and Yes. It's been very positive overall, a real catalyst for change. Good. And, I'd uh, say you couldn't wish for more. No, not really. <laughs> One big wish was for Gordon to reconnect with his late parents through their wartime experiences, all dug up from storage. I think that's something he certainly achieved. And Gordon now has a renewed interest in finding out more about his father's case. Coming up, our Cornish contingent make a big mistake in their bid to declutter. I think you put the most valuable thing you've got on the charity pile. Wow. And at auction, Ricky comes out with a revelation. Actually, I've got a bit of a surprise that I've not told Mariel yet. Earlier on Storage Hoarders, Gordon Froe and partner Lynn made a healthy sum at auction. It's a good bid and gone, 320. I don't know whether there's a heat in here or the excitement, but I'm feeling very warm. <laughs> I really hope we're going to have as much luck with Mancunian Ricky and his daughter, Mariel. 
His hoard is clogging up their garage and their lives. Ricky wants to expand his home-based crafts business, but it's difficult when the garage is jammed full of stuff. And our antiques expert Tom Keane is back to single out any items of worth. We finally got there mm. in the end. It wasn't so bad, though, was it? No, no, no. I think you might get a few surprises. OK. You got a passion for clocks and clock parts. I thought we'd make a sort of job lot of clock parts. Someone yeah. will buy them. They'll be drawn in by this. It's still quite useful. You've got the travelling clock as well. Um, a job lot into auction, but you can't estimate it too much. Really, 40 to 60 pounds for a lot. Mm. Uh, you've got this other carriage clock. It's an early 20th century American example. Mm -hmm. Not a great quality clock, but it's worth 30 or 40 pounds. Now you've got a mix lot of uh, continental silver the oriental coin and the Roman ring. As a fork, it's worth 50 pence. As a bracelet, it's worth a tenner. 30, 40, 50 pounds, that lot. Hmm. Where did you get these from? These were whilst I was travelling through France. As flat irons, are only worth two or three pounds each, but I think with the decoration on them, you might get 25 to 40 pounds for all three, because they're quite decorative, and these sort of vintage kitchens coming back. Hmm, that's right. And guess what? We've got another clock. Another clock now. <laughs> this one seems complete. It's a very common type of clock, 19th century Victorian. If that goes to auction, I'm only going to estimate it 40 or 50 pounds. I hadn't seen this, and I dragged this off the charity pile. It's got a beadwork face mm. almost set into it, and I think these beads from here look to me like coral. It's certainly got some age to it, and I think you put the most valuable thing you've got on the charity pile. Wow, that's a big surprise, that, yeah. yeah. That is £1 to £200 pounds all day long. Right. Yeah, and if two people really get excited about it, it'll do much better. You can buy a <laughs> pair or two of shoes there. Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm glad Tom salvaged the African mask. What a find that was. Under all the junk in the garage, there were a few gems. First, Tom singled out the clock parts, valued at up to £60. Then there was the early 20th century carriage clock with an estimate of 30 to 40 pounds. The collection of spoons, rings, bracelet and a coin were valued at 30 to 50 pounds. And three Victorian painted flat irons steaming in at 25 to 40 pounds. The mahogany wall clock ticking away at up to 50 pounds. Lastly, the beaded and carved African mask with an estimate of one to 200 pounds. If all his items sold at the top end of our experts' estimates, Ricky could make over 400 pounds. Tom was also tantalized by a set of metal printing plates once used in the newspaper trade during the last century. Well, these yeah. are quite hard to value. I'd like to take these to a specialist. They're made in zinc, and mm. they, there must be loads of work going into these. And it's amazing, back in the day, mm. they could produce this for a newspaper, yeah. just to print a paper. On Tom's advice, I've sent Ricky and Mariel off to meet Juliet Johnson at Torridge Auctions to have his printing plates examined more closely. The condition of these, I would definitely think they're round about the early 1900s. Yeah, I think I remember seeing one that was wrapped up in the actual paper that they yes, were printing so that they, yeah. And then it was bound in string, and then um, I noticed one that of them... That became the master yeah, copy then, that's yeah. right, and, and it, had the, it had the dates on, yeah. and it was like 1920-something, yeah. The printing trade does generate collectible items. The most valuable plates are from printed newspapers used for historical events or people and can fetch several hundred thousand pounds. Metal newspaper plates are unusual finds because many were melted and reused again and again. Well, the condition of the plates you have isn't fantastic as I'm sure you can tell yourself um, you're looking at them we're having to really guess what's on some of these um, we could certainly roll them but because of the condition you would only get part of the image mm. pre reproduced this one almost looks 1930s i thought at first it was earlier but if we mm. look at the lights oh yeah mm. i would say this is definitely a 1930s they're not going to be wanted by everyone, quite obviously, mm. that you're looking for specialists, almost purists with these, mm. which is where condition then becomes very important. If I was to make an offer to you for them, mm. I would only be looking at paying you 
probably 45 for the lot. Mm. I think if, if it didn't reach a higher price, I, I would just keep them for a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, thank you. You know, now that you've told me a little bit more yeah. about them and they are of a bit more value than what I thought, yeah. Mm -hmm. Shame they didn't make a sale with Juliet. Maybe they can do better at auction. Ricky has six items in the running and he's hopeful they'll sell. Have you thought about how much money you want to meet today? Actually, I've got a bit of a surprise that I've not told Mariel yet. Um, I'll give you a percentage of the sale. Oh, that's yeah. quite nice then. So what will you do with the percentage? Well, um, <laughs> depends what it is, doesn't we it? We are in London today, so... <laughs> it's a bit of a thank you for, for helping me. Oh. oh, that's very sweet. She's been a big help to you. Yes, she has, yeah. yeah. OK, well, maybe you'll get a pair of shoes out of this lot. Maybe, okay. yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Well, let's see. The bidding's about to be unleashed. But first, we've asked auctioneer Matthew Caddick to give us some real insight into what might sell at auction. In amongst Ricky's lots, we've got, again, very traditional antique uh, items that we'd expect to see in auction. Particular interest amongst Ricky's items, there's a full-face African mask. Now, in good order and early enough, these things can attract huge money in auctions. This example, I don't think it's the earliest we've ever seen, and the condition isn't exceptional, but what it is is a very, very good, honest um, African tribal mask. So for collectors or even for decorative merit, it has legs to do well in the auctions there, and hope. 50A is the bracelet, intricately constructed from Victorian silver-plated fork. First up at auction today, the collection of spoons, rings, bracelet and a coin, valued at 30 to 50 pounds. Good quirky lot, at 20 pounds, 22, 25. Says no, 22 pounds there, do you want 25? 25 there and 28 now. Oh, like at 25 to. pounds, like 20, 20, 28 there, 30. 32. Saying no, at 30 pounds to my right, take two now at 30 pounds. We found the estimate, will we find more? At 30 pounds, no one else wants to come in, then I'm going to sell it for 30 pounds and gone. Sold for £30. £30. Okay, you're it. Happy with that? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Next up, the beaded African mask, which our expert valued at up to £200. This tribal mask at £80 start me. No bids of £80, so I move on. No one likes it for £80. Oh, no right. interest. Not sold. Not sold. No buyers today. Shame, that item was the one they thought had the most potential. I have to wear it to go home. <laughs> Maybe we can expect more from the painted Victorian irons, valued at 25 to 40 pounds. 10 pounds on bid and 12, I'll take now 12 there, 15. At 12 pounds in front of me, 15, 15 there, 18. And 20, oh. 22, okay. 25. Okay, people interested. Says no, at 22 pounds only, are we all done? All out at 22 pounds then. Sold for 22 pounds. Ricky didn't put a reserve price on, that helped. Next up under the gavel, the brass cage carriage clock to the tune of 30 to 40 pounds. This is the one you have got the reserve on, 20 pounds. Little carriage clock, 30 pounds for it, 20 pounds for it then. 20 pounds on bid and two, I'll take now 20 pounds, take two. 22 there, 25, 28, and 30, 32, 35, 38. Thanks for the bid at 35 pounds to my left, take 38 now. At 35 pounds, all done and selling, I'll be at 35 and gone. That's brilliant, sold for £35. You happy with that? Yeah. Oh, he's not happy with that. You had a reserve of 20 and you got 35. What are you complaining about? Maybe Ricky will be happier if the mahogany wall clock sells, ticking in at 40 to £50. I have two bids and the top two are £40 and £45. I'll take 50 in the room. At £45, here, me take 50 now. At £45, then commission bidders have won out this time at £45. We're going to sell them and done. Sold above the lower estimate at £45. Last up, the watch and clock parts, good for restoring, valued at £40 to £60. Interesting little mix lot, and I'm bid £30 with me. I'll take five in the room at £30, take five. 35 there and 40 is next. Yeah. 80 if it helps you. Are we done at 38 £38. A good finish, £38, and the last item to sell. Wow. You're impressed, aren't you? Yeah, I'm impressed on that now, yeah. That's brilliant. Not a bad day for Ricky and Mariel, and they shifted some items. So, how was that for you, Ricky? A bit disappointing. 
Yeah, the mask, we were really had lots of high expectations for the mask. There's no interest at all, was no, there? No, nothing whatsoever. But you know what, maybe that's a good thing because it's better to have no interest than a little bit of interest and to get like 20 quid for it. Yeah. Totted up, Ricky sold five items at auction today. The mahogany wall clock fetched the most. In total, he made £156 after commission. But the big question is, how much of that is going to Ricky's daughter, Mariel? We need to talk about percentages now, don't we? <laughs> yeah. I'll do 10% and I'll round it up. 10%? 10? 10% and I'll round it up. 10? 10%? 10%? Yeah. Yeah. You can't even get a heel for that <laughs> amount. <laughs> Girls, I know. <laughs> We've nailed him down. Don't worry, I'll be fine. Mariel, delivery. In the end, Mariel did get a significant slice of the sales. Guess what she spent it on? And Ricky plans to move his craft business into the garage soon, which is well on its way to being cleared. That's if the shoes don't fill it up first. Both our hoarders have decreased their clutter and made some useful cash. Join me, Aggie McKenzie, next time on Storage Hoarders.